plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice. Boom, and welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. I'm going to show you very, very quickly how to drain down an F&E heating system. That means a feed and expansion heating system, which means that you've got a little tank in the loft that supplies water via a ball valve down into your heating system, okay? We're also then going to do a very, very quick video after that about how to fill up an F&E heating system. So this doesn't work for pressurized systems or combi boilers. I hope you enjoy, and remember everyone, Hold tight. So the first thing you gotta do is make sure that the heating system is switched to off, all right? We don't want the heating system lighting up while we're doing all this, so make sure it's fully isolated first. Now we go up into the airing cupboard that we've got here, and you'll often find that you've got a system that looks a little bit like this, but can always be laid out a little bit differently. Now the most difficult bit about actually draining down one of these systems is sort of ascertaining what bit to turn off and what part of the system is what. What we've got here, this is the coil feed from the boiler, okay? This has got hot water going in from the boiler into this coil here and going out again. Now this pipe here is the expansion pipe that goes up and over into your loft tank. This pipe up here is the feed at the bottom of the tank that goes down into the system. So we need to turn this pipe off here. Often where this pipe joins the main part of the central heating system you can get little blockages so when it comes to filling up again that might be something you want to think about if you have trouble filling it up. If you do then let us know. Basically I've turned this one off here but if you don't have a valve you can go up into the loft find the small tank and tie the ball valve up. That's really easy to do just get yourself a little bit of string tie it around the ball valve and tie that up around a rafter or even on a stick that rests over the top of the tank and that should stop any water coming in from your mains. If you can't do that, the last thing you can do is actually turn the main supply off to the house, which will in turn turn the supply off to the ball valve, which means then that the system will drain down when you come to drain it. So we've got that turned off now. So now I'm going to pop downstairs and find the lowest point that's got a drain off on it, pop my hose on it, pop a towel on there and start draining down. And it's going to be amazing, I tell you. Right, so I've hunted around the house and I've found that this drain off here is the lowest drain off on the system. It's on the ground floor. As you can see, it's only about an inch off the floor. And also it's not on drop down leg as well. So make sure that this radiator, sometimes you can have rads that are fed from two pipes that come down, which means that all you're going to do then is just drain down the top floor and that one leg. If you're working on other radiators on the ground floor, they might not drain down. So always be aware, trace out the pipe work and make sure that you're actually going to be draining down the whole system. So what I've got to do now is just grab a hose, put a little towel under here because these can leak around the outside, which is a bit annoying, and then turn it on and then we can think about then venting the radiators. Right, so I've got my lovely high-vis hose here. We've got to think about health and safety, haven't we? Because that's the culture we live in these days. But, um, so, I've got a beautiful white towel that a customer has given me. Right, anyway, what we're going to do then is pop this hose on here. Sometimes you might need a little Jubilee clip. This is a nice, fresh, tight hose, so it should be fine. And then we're just going to get a small spanner on here and undo this, okay? I'm gonna turn it anti-clockwise to turn this on. I'm gonna give you a lovely close-up shot now as well, and it's gonna be bloody great. Are you ready? Boom. So here we go, nice little close-up. We're right in here. Just give that, turn that on, and you should start to hear water rushing out of here. There we go. Bit of water coming out now, can you hear it? Right, so as you see, our hose is going off and outside out to a drain at a lower point. So, as you can see, we've now got water coming out of our pipe just here. Great. Right, the thing is though, is we've obviously turned this off here and we've got water coming out of our hose pipe downstairs. Effectively though, what we're doing at the moment is kind of putting a little vacuum on each of the radiators. We've let the water out of the tank up there. Also, this F&E pipe would have also emptied, but each one of the radiators is now going to need its little air vent at the top of it opened up. We do that with a radiator bleed key, and if I was you, if you notice I've got a little taper on the end of it, it's always real handy, it's a little plumber's tip, just to file the taper off. Especially if you've got really old radiators that have been painted about a million times, because it can be a right nightmare getting these on. So we're going to find the highest radiator bleeds in the house. Often that could be the bathroom. If you've got a tall towel rail, that's the best place to start, right at the top of that big towel rail. Here though, we've just got about four or five radiators upstairs. So I'm just going to go to the first one, open that up. We should start to hear air getting sucked into that radiator. Right, so we should just be able to undo this now. There you go. That's letting air in. So lovely, that's letting loads of air in now. Do that systematically to each radiator and remember which ones you've opened, okay? Because when it comes to filling up later on, you don't want to forget to close any, all right? Otherwise, you'll feel like an absolute gut head, which wouldn't be good. 
No. Now you can move downstairs, the other radiators in the house, once you know you've got the system level going down and down and down, you should be able to open up one of these. If you find that you've got any radiators that aren't draining down properly, make sure obviously that the lock shield is open, and also if you've got one, that the thermostatic radiator valve is open. So now we're in the living room, we've got a radiator here, so we're just gonna undo this. Ground floor, see that's now sucking, so we know now the water level is getting down like this. Got one over here. And that's sucking too, so yeah, we're doing really well, whoa! All right, and after about 20 minutes, as you can see, we go back to the hose and it's pretty much stopped draining. So there you go, it's pretty much drained down now. You can do whatever work you want to do on the system now. If I was you, I'd leave this open and also leave your drain off hose on, just in case you get a big glug come through, but you should be fine. If you need any more help or any more information, then go to our website at plumberparts.co.uk or you can ask us a question at our Google Help Out page. Also, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. We do loads of stuff on there. But above all, subscribe to our videos because we do Ask the Plumber, you can meet my cat, and you can learn how to cook steak, which, if you ask me, is amazing. Um, so yeah, any questions or comments, just leave them in the bit below. And as ever, why don't you click on the share button as well and let your friends know about it, all right? I'll see everybody later and enjoy up next video, which is gonna be all about how to fill one of these up. All right, I'll see you there. Hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk Honest reviews and advice.